Oh man, I'm having a blast playing my favorite low agent gambling addiction simulator. If you imagine hard enough, it's almost as if all those cute characters I spent my life savings on are, are actually real. Keep it down down there, I'm trying to live my fantasy, damn it! Jesus Christ. Wow. Whoa. Oh, the grand champion. I saw your fight against the Grey Prince. You're the best. Can I can I follow you around? Ah! Oh. Oh, black! Ah! Oh! Oh, God! Fuck! Oh! Oh! Wow! You're the grand champion! I saw your fight against the Grey Prince! You're the best! Can I... can I follow you around? I won't get in the way! Ooh, nice cock adventurer. <laughs>
Health and safety is a foreign topic for local Cyrodoleans. The lower levels of the tower are infested with rats, zombies and Jews. Feudalism has seen better days. Continuing through, you will meet up with the Emperor again. He gives you a pep talk and gives you his shitty amulet, before a mysterious force freezes you in place, while one of Mankar's goons releases Uriel's soul from his mortal shell. No. Talos save us. You find out that Uriel was a naughty boy, he was having an affair, and his bastard child can save Tamriel from Dagos. It is your duty to find him and bring him the amulet. Oh my eyes! Welcome to Middle Earth, I, I mean Cyrodiil. It was once a lush jungle, but we don't talk about that. The lore is confusing enough. Objects also pop in sometimes. This land is inhabited by trolls, mud crabs, bandits and gym rats. Cyrodiil is unique for the fact that each region has a different climate depending on the neighboring provinces. North is cold and close to Skyrim. South is warm and close to elsewhere. East is a swamp and close to the Black Marsh. And West is tropical and is close to the sea. There are nine major cities, each governed by a count. Anvil, Breville, Bruma, Shadenhall, Coral, Kavach, Leywin, Skingrad, and the Imperial City. And all of them have horrible living conditions, with most people not living past the age of 40. Except Breville, which is a superpower and a culturally rich city of intellectuals. The locals suffer from multiple personality disorder. Can eat for a day with a single coin. I've sighted the Forlorn Watchman again. So this is the Radiant AI Bethesda was talking about. Around. Radiant AI was developed to make NPCs act more believable. You know, like you normal people. Todd. They go outside, they go to sleep, they go to work. Now, I'm not I saying it's bad, but it's certainly primitive. It's more goofy than it should be. With characters sometimes wandering in the city for hours, while talking to the same people about the same subjects. The dialogue system is truly traumatic. It feels like it was programmed by a lobiomy patient who never talked to anybody that isn't mom or dad. You have to play a minigame to persuade the NPC. Inside the circle there are four corners. Each corner gives you a different result. The more piss a corner has, the better the result will be. You can only click on the corner one time before it's blacked out. You get the best results depending That's on the facial expression of the abomination you talk to. This awards you the most good boy points. Most My not personal now, strategy, just bribes and quantum physics is easier to understand than this. Oblivion, just like Morrowind, is from a different era. Meaning weapons and armor need to be repaired all the time. Speaking of armor, almost all of the armor sets look like a bizarre mesh of shiny plastic and confused art direction. Wearing these sets make you look like a low quality cosplay. What Oblivion lacks in good world building and competent gameplay, it makes up for it with quests. For example, there is a quest where you need to find a missing famous painter. You later figure out that said painter is stuck in his own drawing. You enter the drawing and find the missing painter, but he is stuck, he cannot go back without the paintbrush, which is deeper in the drawing. You also find out that he is in fact a fraud. He gives you turpentine to battle the painted trolls, and it does extra damage, which I find is a nice touch. You retrieve the brush and you both escape. The real lesson here, it's not about how good or bad you draw, it's about what each drawing means to you and that's touching because I draw pornography. Or how about a quest where you go to sleep in a rusty ship only to be waking up by pirates and you have to battle your way to the leader and make her submit. Or you can have a funny chat with them and confuse them into thinking that you are part of their gang. Or the quest where you become a gladiatorial grand champion, battling in the arena with each fight getting harder and harder. This one black gentleman keeps making fun of me for being a nobody. In one fight you even get a pig to help you out. Go get him pork chop. Before fighting the champion you can dig into his past and find out his ancestors are vampires. Telling him this information will make him suicidal and you're the suicide hotline clerk who failed at his job. 
but the best quests come from the Dark Brotherhood. To get enrolled into the Boy Scouts of America clubhouse, you first have to murder a civilian. Make sure it's nobody important and uh, try not to be seen. You go to sleep and you get woken up by your new homeboy, Lucien Lucien. He's big. good. He asks you to kill an old guy in the woods to get your first badge and to officially join the Dark Brotherhood. After doing that, you greet your new group of friends. Gagran Groblevag is my favorite because he believes might makes right and he's just so friendly. I'd hug you. I won't go into detail about the quest line, but it gets really interesting in the middle point. Involving conspiracy, fraud, and maybe necrophilia. Instead, I will be talking about my favorite quest in the game. A quest where you go into a mansion with five other people who think there's a prize chest full of gold hidden somewhere inside. You must pick them off one by one, and this could lead to some hilarious situations. Who done it? Welcome to Tamriel's favorite game show, Are You a Milk Drinker? I'm your host, Dorky Vinebottom. If you are new to the game, it's very simple. Search the mansion for the stash of gold, and if you find it, you win. But be careful, the other contestants will be searching for it as well. And all forms of trickery and violence are legal. Our contenders for today are Dova Cytron, a Dunmer woman trying to make it big in Cyrodiil. Mathilde Petit, a nice Breton woman. You should really try her pies. They're quite delicious. Nails the naughty. Oh, I remember women used to play with our father's swords. Neville, a retired soldier that wants the money because his retirement fund is very low. Primo Antonius, an imperial noble just doing this for fun. And our last participant, farming equipment. Sorry, our producers don't let us talk like that anymore. Shit's on fans! Now that we are all equated with our participants, let's begin! Oh, it looks like the lizard killed the Dunmer girl first. Looks like getting big in the city was never made for her. Yes, the poor girl is dead. What a shame. Well, I guess she won't be finding the gold. <laughs> Oh, here goes Primo. I never would have expected this. Looks like our guests dead. are starting to Anyone get worried. Drops, I swear I'm gonna gather every drop of alcohol in this house and drink myself. You and I, we need to watch each other's backs. Oh man, Nels goes down. I did not expect him to be a milk drinker. Neville is getting paranoid. He thinks the kind old lady is the murderer. Oh, I haven't been this excited since I had to smear cheese all over my grandfather's I've seen Black Widows like her before. What's this? Shit's on fence and Neville had made a truce and to going to kill Matilda? All we have to do now is find a way out of here. How goes the Red Guard? Looks like our little lizard friend is in fact not a milk drinker. Unlike the rest of these sorry excuses for participants. You know what's funny? There was never any chest full of gold. It was all a trick. It was actually me who ordered the contract on these people because they all made fun of me and stole my teddy bear. This is what you get, you filthy cow chuckers. After a while of harassing the locals, you finally remember you have to save the world. You escort yourself to Coral to speak to Joffrey, the leader of the Blades, who tells you you can find Uriel's failed abortion in Kavach, but it was destroyed by a giant infested demon portal, and Martin being a contrarian refuses to cooperate until you deal with the infestation. Welcome to uh, Oblivion, the most tedious and brain dead part of the game. Veteran Oblivion players still suffer from PTSD. Throughout the game you will have to go into multiple of these gates. And they are either linear combat gauntlets, or make Moses' walk in the desert for 4 years look like a Friday movie night. You will get lost. The enemy variety is also bullshit, as you will have to fight some of the toughest enemies in tight spaces. Did I mention that every enemy scales with your level? And what do you receive for your troubles? A very minor stat increase. 
Now that the portal is closed, Martin will come with you to Joffrey. However, Joffrey is incompetent and let the amulet get stolen by Mankar's gimps. Joffrey puts Martin inside the Asian daycare center. So what do you do? You infiltrate the Elf Apologist Clubhouse, where you see Mankar giving his speech. I go now to paradise. Well done. You fail to get the amulet, but you get a satanic bible for your troubles. You give the book to Martin, who then I suffers a heart attack. Such a thing is dangerous even to handle. For your heinous I actions, Joffrey tells you to close another oblivion gate. And another in Bruma. Oh, and another one we need to get the allies. Another one that's very important. Uh, Bruma again. Uh, and you gotta do the one the Black Marsh again, again uh, for some reason. From Did I mention I don't like this game? After finishing your daily visit to the psychiatric ward, Martin summoned the portal to Mankar's cringe dimension, full of every BDSM kink you can possibly imagine. The creatures of the garden torment us endlessly. You bully Mankar into submission and take the amulet back to Shin Bean. You did it. You defeated him. But it's too late. Dagon is already out of his personal trolley dimension and is destroying the Imperial City. You have to stop him. However, he uses powers beyond our understanding. That's because Oblivion is run on the nightmare engine of Gamebryo and the stability is horseshit. Crashes are normal, game breaks are an inconvenience. You can have fun with this. My name is Calendil. Mine is a simple life. I sell my wares, gems, scrolls, and magic wands. I get up at 7 and go to bed at 10. Life is good. It was like any other normal day. Going to work, eager to serve my customers. And then he came. The hero of Kavach. He didn't say anything. The way he carried himself, I could tell he had a strong sense of justice. As he came toward me, he began some sort of ancient ritual unbeknownst to me. It must have been important. Then out of thin air came 50 watermelons as he carried on with this mysterious ceremony. Then he leapt onto my desk, bellowing out a foul gale from his rear and snatching two of my scrolls. The Empire truly has a worthy hero on their hands. This is truly the best day of my life. Check this out, item duplication glitch. Have a bunch of the same scroll, click on the scrolls, drop the melon from your inventory. Congratulations, you just solved world hunger. You crown Martin and he morphs into a cum dragon. This game has DLC. Have you ever thought what was life before? Have you ever wanted to reclaim the holy land? Did you have any past experiences with elves that made you think questionable thoughts? Introducing Knights of the Nine, where you can finally live out your fantasies of Dios vaulting primitive races. An evil proto-high elf named Amriel is risen back from his grave to enact his revenge on the gods and enslave humanity again. It is up to you to find the relics of a mysterious warrior who put them down in the first place and you- It's just dungeon crawling, lots and lots of dungeon crawling. Hope you don't have claustrophobia, but the real meaty part of this DLC is that the Crusader, Pelinel Whitestrake, the man that fought Amriel and saved humanity from slavery, is actually a time-traveling cyborg sent from the future by the gods to commit elven genocide and to enact human supremacy. It is your rightful duty to continue his legacy and slaughter as many of these deviants as you possibly can. Well, that was fun. Oh great, not even two minutes in and I see lunatics. No, go away. I'm not here. Welcome to the Shivering Isles, Shiagora's plane of oblivion, where everybody is just a regular Come Twitter on. user. It'll be fun watching them get knocked around up there. They should have listened to me. 
It's a safe haven for all the people that society has abandoned, but not all as happy as it seems. Jigalag, Shiagoras' alter ego, that was imprisoned because he was too powerful, is breaking free from his chains. You must prove yourself to the Prince of Madness that you got what it takes to stop him. And by that I mean you will be playing a very delicate game of 4D political chess to become a Duke of Ether. Mania or Dementia? This DLC is actually really fun. There's this one quest where you are a dungeon master and you make the lives of would-be adventurers a living nightmare. Or the quest where you help a guy kill himself because they are depressed. you to kill me. But he doesn't want to do it himself because his soul will be transported to Willy Hot Jr. kind of existence is any better than this? So he begs you to kill him. You comply. After having fun tormenting the locals, you defeat Jellybean and become the new you Prince of Madness. Of Wait, what? What can I do? What can I interest you in? I appreciate. Look, I will be perfectly honest, I want to like this game. It has its moments when it actually works, but that's only 7% of the time. You liking this game is not the incorrect opinion, I understand why you would like it. Or even say it's your favorite Elder Scrolls game. Do I like it? No, should you play it? Uh, yes, but take it with a grain of salt. It will crash, it has bugs, visuals are outdated. And the dialogue is horrendous, but maybe it's part of the charm. And hey, if you get bored there's always mods. Like this mod that lets you play as Dante from the popular game series Devil May Cry. All in an effort to make this game that much more immersive. Don't forget every time you download another steamy hot you think about yours truly. That's all for today, tune in next time when I talk about how to keep your journal neat and tidy. Updated my journal. Seen any elves? <laughs>